and uh, verses uh, 22 through 29. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verses 22 through 39, or 23 through 29, sorry. And they said unto him, Who art thou? This is talking about John the Baptist, and that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? And John said this, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which uh, were sent were of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, why baptizest thou then, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I want to uh, just uh, kind of center in on those two scriptures, or two of those scriptures. One is verse 26. But there standeth one among you whom ye know not. And then the introduction in verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Jesus, so very much, Lord, for your presence in our lives. And Jesus, you're everything to us. And Lord, we come to you this day, Lord, all of us gathered together. We're in one mind and one accord because we just, Lord, want to bring everything to you and want you just to continue to work inside of each and every one of us. Lord, I pray that your work will be accomplished in each one today by your word. Lord, that each one of us will receive your word into our hearts, into our lives. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I, uh, I had a uh, different message actually that I had in mind for today. Just really, really felt this of God. And one thing that kept going over and over in my mind just at the beginning of service was uh, a fellow had once said that if we'll just, just talk about Jesus, we'll always be anointed. And, uh, and so I want to just talk to you about Jesus today. Amen. We can, uh, as ministers and preachers, and just we can go through all kinds of different means and ways of studying and coming to you know, up with sermons and messages that we can preach that hopefully will inspire, help to change lives, help to bring people to an understanding and a realization of all that Jesus can be in their lives. The truth of the matter is, is that we only gain intimacy through uh, what Terry was talking about today. We gain intimacy with an individual through spending time with them. Intimacy is not possible without knowledge. Where there are secrets, intimacy is restricted. And, uh, and where there is a lack of knowledge or a lack of ability on our parts or, or uh, maybe determination to get to know each other, that intimacy, and I've, it remains distant. And I've counseled people in marriages that have been that way. They just, you know, there's always areas of their lives that are missing. What a great message that was this morning on prayer. And we need to turn our lives back to those things that, that the Bible talks about. And one of those things, of course, is we need to turn back and we need to be a people of prayer. Amen. But I want to talk to you just about Jesus today. I find that, that so many times we, we exclude Him in our reasoning. We exclude Him in our, our daily lives. And I think that, that today, the more that we come to know Him, the more we realize how much He wants to be in our lives. And I think that, that, uh, that Jesus is in the business of revealing Himself to us in greater measure as we grow in Him. And uh, I want to grow in Him. I don't know about you, but I want to get to know Him better. 
And I know that I, I may say that a lot and, and it may be words that I say, but, but there's a hunger in me. And it's just come in this last while, maybe over the last six months to a year. I know sometimes we go on autopilot as far as the things that, that we do for God and coming to church and all the rest of it. I don't want to do things on autopilot. I really don't. I, I want to get to know Him so intimately and so well that that my footsteps will, I will have no doubt as to the fact that they are following exactly what he wants me to do. I want to know that when I go through times in my life where there is crisis or there is hurt or there are wounds that take place because of individuals or circumstances that I have one that stands beside me always. And that is Jesus. He's with us all the time. And uh, it, it, we, we make mention of words like he is infinitely powerful and yet I don't think at times we give him the credibility to be able to do what he wants to do in our lives. We can say the words, but, but do we really trust him enough to just give him everything? I want to do more than just say the words. I want to do more than just talk about what he can do in my life or what he can do through this church. I want to see what he can do through me. And I want to see what he can do through each and every one of our lives. Uh, some of us may even feel like we've, we've gone beyond that point where God can use us. And we're, you know, can I tell you, we never get to that point until we die and get to go to heaven and be with Him or the rapture takes place and we get to leave here. God still has a mission for us and He still has things that He wants us to do. There's still people that He wants us to reach and, and there's still those that He wants us to pray for. And, and so I want to continue to grow in God. Amen. We talk about him being omnipresent and, uh, and yet I don't think that we can understand that totally when we're trapped so much in linear time that we don't understand that he's there all the time in all time. He's already in our tomorrow. We worry about tomorrow so much. We worry about what God's going to do, but, but Jesus is already there. Because we're subject to time, but, but God is not subject to time. Eternity is not an unending amount of, of years, of millenniums piled one on top of the other. But eternity is the absence of time and, and where God already is. He said, I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega. And so God's already been there. He's already, he already knows what's happening in our future and He's already got His hand upon it. I mean, isn't that wonderful to know? Now, how many of you worry? <laughs> Some of you won't even put up your hands, <laughs> but I know you do. We worry so much about what's coming. We worry about, yeah, it's amazing to me how many people are so worried about what happens in the States with the election coming up. You know, what is it? The, I better be careful what I say. The, the best of the worst choices? I don't know. You know, like it's just, you know, some things, you know, when you look at both of their lives and we find out that neither one of them is really an individual that we would think that we'd want to lead. But you understand what the Word says? God's the one that sets up kingdoms and takes them down. And we preach about the end of days and, the, and what's going to happen in a one world government and a one world religion and a one world system and, and, and then we worry so much whenever things and kingdoms and, and countries don't line up with what we think that they should in order to promote godliness. But the Bible says that this world is going to go the opposite direction from that. But God's got it all in His hand. And the best thing of all, He's got us in His hand. Jesus has us in His hands. What a great thing that is to be in His hands. I know that, that no matter what happens in, uh, in our countries and no matter what happens in our world, Jesus is still going to have the authority to say what happens in my life because I'm His child. He loves me with an everlasting love. He cannot forget about me. Because I'm His. Any more, than, any more than you could forget some of the th children that have become a part of your lives. Any more than you could forget those things. And, and I know that especially for women that uh, when you've had a child it's just so hard to forget them. Any more than you could forget that Jesus cannot forget us. We're always, always there at the forefront of His mind. 
And I'm thankful for that today. The Bible says that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. If you had thought about, if we had thought about that, or analyzed it, or examined it piece by piece when we first approached God, we would have probably said that doesn't make sense. But there was something in our hearts and our minds that just recognized the love of God, recognized that He loved us enough to die for us, and said, I believe it. I believe in that sacrifice. And uh, we applied it in our lives. times beyond that you still wouldn't have touched how much God loves you because of the finiteness of our minds and the understanding whatever reasons we find um, with every description or introduction of Jesus they seem to fall short of all he wants to be for each and every one of us he is called the Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end he is called the Almighty. And yet we wonder sometimes whether he can solve this little problem in our lives. He is called the author, and, and I know that we all believe this, the beginning of our faith, but he's also called the finisher of our faith. And he who has begun a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete that work in you. I love the faithfulness of God. <laughs> If I judge God according to my, my understanding of faithfulness, according to my life and the times that I failed him, I would think to myself, you know, God's probably, you know, given up on me already. I'm so glad that his faithfulness is not determined by, by mine or, or by my lack of it as I, uh, probably a better term for it. But it is determined by what his word says and God's faithfulness is that he will finish our faith. Don't let your faith go. Don't let it go. Don't, uh, don't walk away and don't get offended and walk out of church because, because you don't like somebody or somebody said or done the wrong thing. Don't do that. Too many people have, you know, I want you to know that, that bitterness is one of the greatest things that has caused people to walk away from their faith. Somebody said or did something. Some pastor may have preached something he didn't like. Somebody, somebody didn't shake their hand or somebody didn't do anything. And they walk away and, and they leave their faith behind. And as Paul talked about, they become a castaway because of the fact that they have given up on their faith. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on your faith. Keep believing that God's going to do a work in you. Keep believing that he's going to keep on forgiving you, that he's going to keep on washing you, that he's going to keep on holding your hand, that he's going to keep on helping you with tomorrow and the day after and the week after uh, because he is the author and the finisher. He's called the branch of the tribe of Judah. He's called the bread of life, and he is everything that we need to sustain us spiritually. You don't need anything else but Jesus. Because he is the water of life and he is the bread of life. And, and everything that, that he is to each and every one of us will sustain us spiritually. He is the chief shepherd. Now, how many have read the 23rd Psalm or memorized it when you were younger? Thy rod and thy staff, they... 
Anybody know what they were for? Correction. The staff had a crook in it, obviously, so that when that sheep started to wander off, that, that crook would come out and grab that sheep and pull it back into the sheepfold. But the rod was there for a whole different reason, if you study it out. That sheep got too far away. That shepherd had unerring aim. I remember doing this one time. We had, my wife and I had a boxer. Our first boxer we had, his name was Barney. And, uh, and he would not listen at all. In fact, he would listen to me, but he wouldn't listen to my wife. And, uh, and so he would just, every time the door was open, even an inch, he was, pew, and he was gone. And, and then he wouldn't come, and she'd be down there chasing him down the street with a piece of cheese trying to get him to come back again. And uh, <laughs> she's so mad at him. But we did something. We went out in the field one time and, uh, and let him loose, and, and she called him. And, of course, as usual, he completely ignored her. And uh, so I picked up a rock and, and uh, threw it, hit him. I thought that was pretty good, you know, that I hit him because he was a ways away. I had a better arm back then. Nowadays, you know, <laughs> but then I hit him. And, and he looks up and, and, uh, and came. And uh, so after a while, you know, of doing this, every time my wife called him, he would come. Now she found out there was something that she had to do to make him come. She just had to bend over and pick up a rock. And he'd come. He didn't even need to be called. Well, that shepherd would, would you know, when those sheep wandered away, boy, he'd throw that rod and, and that sheep would get hit. And the, boy, that sheep would turn around and come back again. Say, we don't, we don't like that. I'm so glad that God gets our attention when we're wandering. Aren't you glad that he gets your attention when you wander? Because it's not his will that you leave the fold and wander off by yourself. Because the predators are looking for those that wander off. The cornerstone, he is the one we build our lives on. Jesus is. John tells us that he's the creator and the maker of all things. All things were created by him. And without him was nothing that is made, that was made. He is the day spring. He is our deliverer. He is the desire of all nations. He is the door by which we walk through into a new and great and wonderful life. He is the first and the last. And again, he is the good shepherd. He is the holy one of Israel. He is the I am when you see this, the, the great God of the Old Testament when when uh, Moses came and was standing by that, or by that burning bush, and who shall I say has sent me? You tell them that I am, that I am has sent you. Jesus is the I am of the Old Testament. He is the I am's that you find in the New Testament. I am that living bread. I am the, the oh my goodness, my mind just drew a blank. <laughs> hate it when that happens. He is the king of ages. He is the king of kings. There is no authority in this world that surpasses him. He's Emmanuel, that is God with us. He is the lawgiver. He is the lamb. He is the light of the world. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lord of all. He is the Lord of lords. He is the Messiah. He's the morning star. He's our redeemer. He's the resurrection and the life. He's our rock by which we stand on. He is the rose of Sharon. He's the Son of God, and He's also the Son of Man. He is the true light, and He is the Word made flesh. He is wonderful. He is Counselor. He is the Mighty God. He is the Everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is our Messiah and our Deliverer. Jesus is everything and all of these things in our lives. Hallelujah. Let's stand together, shall we? Amen, amen, amen. I re- listened to a podcast recently that my wife had sent to me and I had a chance to listen to it this last week. I was gone and the minister in this podcast was saying over and over again uh, during the podcast that my job is to lead people into a better relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what my job is. I want you all to do a little homework. Because you see, I don't know where all of you are right now in your lives, but I know that each one of you have, have areas of your life and things in your life that, that God needs to address. Your homework is to find out in Scripture where God addresses those issues. 
and study out the personality and character of Jesus Christ that meets your need. If you need deliverance, why don't you go and look at that and begin to study that out in God's word and say, this is my deliverer. Jesus is my deliverer. If you need healing, why don't you go through all the times that Jesus healed her and start reading about that and say, yes, Jesus is. I want you to get to know Jesus better this coming week. I want each one of us to get to know him better this coming week. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just close our eyes for a few moments, shall we? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just love you so very much. And God, even in saying that, I know, Lord, that our love is still tempered by our own limitations, Lord, both intellectually and also emotionally, Lord. That we say we love you, and yet there's so many times I think that even that falls short. But Lord, I want you to know that, that this church, these people, Lord, these men and women, Lord, we're here today because we love you and we want to get to know you better so that we can love you with, to a greater degree than what we do right now. And Lord, I pray that you will just open us up to revelation As Paul said in his word that he would doubtless come to revelations, Lord. And it is with us also that as long as there is a hunger in us to know you better, that you will reveal yourself in greater measure to each one of us. So wherever we are and whatever we need right now, Lord, God, I pray that this coming week, each one of us would come to know you in that capacity in our lives. God, let us know you as deliverer and healer and counselor, the one that can make make a difference, Lord. Jesus, I pray right now in your precious name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have one other, one other bit of homework to give you today. And uh, I'm sorry for my voice. I don't know why it's gone all croaky. But I want you to tell somebody this week about the move of God in your life, and in our services. Tell them about what God's doing, what God's done, and what God wants to do in their lives. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's thank him one more time, shall we? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.